I didn't realize it, but the whole green room was looking at us. All the celebrities were disgusted. Oh. That guy from Texas was like, here's my card, call me on Monday. <laughs> that worked out. The second time I met O.J. Simpson. <laughs> was right after the trial of the century. There I was, now a young man of probably 23. O.J. Simpson was the most famous or infamous face on planet Earth. I was in a restaurant in Beverly Hills with my agents. I wasn't alone in the restaurant, but I was alone. I was the only black person in the restaurant. <laughs> and in the 90s, that felt very uncomfortable. Now I tend to enjoy it at this age. <laughs> I was having dinner with my agents, celebrating a deal that they told me was lucrative, but I later learned fucking sucked. <laughs> and suddenly, a group of women walked by. Every race was in that group. Black, white, Asian, Latina, white, white, and white again. They were all gorgeous. I watched them walk by. Then, I saw a familiar face. Al Collins, the man from the infamous Bronco Chase, walked by and embraced one of the women, and they walked towards the door. Couldn't believe what I saw. And then, close behind him, was O.J. Simpson, newly released from jail. The restaurant fell still. I was shocked. I didn't mean to say it out loud, but it just came out. <gasps> OJ. <laughs> he stopped. Turned around to see who said it. Saw my black face and correctly assumed it was me. <laughs> I was sitting in the corner of the booth. He leaned over all the white people I was having dinner with and shook my hand. How are you, young man? He looked in my eyes and I could see in his eyes that he didn't remember meeting me the first time. <laughs> and then he walked away. And I looked back at my agents, and all of them had nothing short of disgust on their faces. And the only one with the courage to voice their disgust was a woman named Sharon, who used to represent me. How could you, she said. How could you shake hands with that murderer? I said, Sharon, with all due respect, that murderer ran for over 11,000 yards. <laughs> and he was acquitted, so, you know, fuck it. Glove didn't fit. Glove didn't fit. Get over yourself. <laughs> Some people can't do that. Some people just can't, they can't get over themselves. Gay people have a hard time doing that recently. Here we go, here comes the deep water. <laughs> now recently I've noticed that. I noticed that uh, with that Manny Pacquiao controversy. Yeah, no, it was now, now in the gay community's defense, uh, Manny Pacquiao said some outlandish shit about gay people. Very, very not nice things that I won't repeat, but there was biblical verses and <laughs> some analogies to animals. Wasn't a good look. Nike took his shoes immediately which I thought was a little harsh. A little harsh, you know what I mean? Cause he's, uh, just cause he's Asian, you know what I mean? Fuck you gonna take shoes off Asian dude to appease a gay dude, you know what I mean? No, you don't know what I mean. But Asian people kinda know what I mean, no? No Asians in the front, no? No, this is what I mean, okay, look, okay, you're Asian dude, no, I, don't, I say this with no disrespect, but we're all Americans, right? And we can agree that America has a huge body count all over the world, but nowhere more than Asia. Literally, if you look at history, recently, we have bombed the masculinity out of an entire continent. We dropped two atomic bombs on fucking Japan and they've been drawing Hello Kitty and shit ever since. There's <laughs> a lot of lady boys in the wake of our bombs. And I know these things because my wife is Asian. She's Filipino. All right, well, okay, so that explains it. Now you know why you see me at all those Filipino events. <laughs> I'm not there picking up pussy, I'm dropping some off. 